Placement season is around the corner and some of you may be panicked with your upcoming technical interviews. I would say don't panic, face them, learn from them. And here are a few guidelines which will help you in streamlining your preparation for facing your technical interviews. So let's begin. So here is a top line view, a top view of uh, the main core areas that you should focus on. And these tips not just apply to freshers, but most of them are equally relevant for experienced professionals as well. So uh, you can divide your preparation into four main categories. One is the programming language. Obviously, it's a technical interviews and you are expecting some of coding rounds and you need to code in a language of your choice. So you need to be well versed in one of your favorite programming languages. We will come to all of these in some detail. Next, very crucial is DS and algorithms. I am grouping them together, but we will see them separately. So data structures and algorithm, this forms the backbone of your programming interviews. Next, for freshers, uh, CS fundamentals are also very important. Uh, we don't see too much of uh, operating system or computer networks problems for experienced professionals, but uh, it's good to have these fundamentals right. These will help you throughout your career to become a better programmer. And these will also be asked directly in some of the interviews. Then we have design and design can be of two types as well. Low level design, high level design. We will see them in some detail. So let's dive deeper into each of these sections. So in programming language, it's recommended that you pick one of the main programming languages, either C++, Java or Python. Uh, some people also are coding in JavaScript and Golang, but uh, these are universally accepted. And if you are comfortable with one of these three, it's great. Most of the interviewers would be familiar with one or more of these. So you should try to take your interviews in one of these main languages, although you can take in JavaScript or Golang as well. And uh, here it's not just uh, knowing the syntax, but you should be very comfortable with the different uh, ready-made algorithms and different containers, different data structures that are there in the language. In, if you are using C++, you should know STL in detail. You will need still in almost every programming problem that you encounter. Similarly, in Java, you should know all the other things, STLs, hash maps, sets, queues, lists, everything. You should be aware of these. Similarly, in Python. So be an expert in one of these. Then next, the backbone is the data structure and algorithms. And this is a huge area. You cannot improve in one day, two day. It will take a couple of months at least. So let's see the some of the important topics that are asked quite frequently in most of the interviews. So linked list, these are one of the favorites in interviews. So uh, you should be familiar with how to implement a linked list. What are the components of a list? A value, it can be a complex class as well as some primitive type. And then we have a next pointer. What's the difference between singly linked list, doubly linked list, how you can traverse a linked list, then uh, you should practice some of the questions involving lists, linked lists. For example, let's say you want to reverse a linked list. How can you do that recursively, iteratively? And then uh, try reversing in batches that reverse first two, then uh, reverse next two in batches. Similarly, cycle detection in linked list, finding the beginning of node of cycle, so try some problems with linked list and you should get familiar. Then you, you should do some problems based on stacks and queue. You should know fundamental difference between stacks and queues, where they are used. Uh, these are even used in your graph algorithms. For example, in most of the DFS algorithms, you can also implement using stacks. Since uh, stacks are the way recursion works and we generally write a lot of graph algorithms using recursion they can be also written using stacks and queues are also used in breadth for search and many more applications 
level order traversal of trees or for many more applications then uh, one of the big chunk of questions comes from binary trees and binary search trees so if you are taking four or five interviews then it's very likely that at least one or even more maybe two of them are involving trees then uh, hash maps and hash sets again it's very important uh, if you are taking four or five interviews it's very likely that uh, you will use it a couple of time in your interview for a given company and even if there are other solutions those can be most of the time there are some solutions involving hash maps as well so you can start with hash maps as your first solution and later uh, move to better solution since uh, in interview scenario you will not straight away uh, jump to the optimal solution you it may not uh, be very uh, evident very uh, obvious in the beginning so you can start with some hash map based solution so then interviewer may ask you to optimize for space and then you can proceed with some more optimal solution so you should be well practiced with using hash maps and hash sets in your favorite language then you should know what are heaps what are min heaps max heaps where do you need to use min heap or max heap then you should know priority queues and uh, if you solve a few questions related to heaps you should get comfortable with these and then uh, you need to study about graphs these would be asked by many of the good companies the logos which you can see here most of them can ask problems based on graphs and in graphs graphs is a very big topic in itself you cannot read each and every algorithm related to graphs so let me give you some guidelines for graphs first and foremost is that you should be fluent in the graph representations i would recommend adjacency list wherever possible or adjacency matrix you should be so well prepared for implementing adjacency list and matrices that even if you are half asleep you should be able to implement adjacency list or adjacency matrix so that uh, you don't spend a bunch of time in the interview just figuring out how to represent your graph this should come as a habit and not you should think too much about it your main focus should be on the actual algorithm so this is the must have if you don't uh, are fluent in this then uh, it's very likely that you will exceed the time that is given to you in the interview then comes bfs and dfs that is graph traversals these may look trivial but uh, a bunch of problems would be direct or indirect application of these maybe 30% of the problems mostly asked in interviews related to graphs would be some indirect application of bfs dfs or even direct application of these so you should be very familiar with implementing these and you should be equally practiced in these as well then you should know cycle detection how to do cycle detection in directed undirected weighted unweighted graphs weighted unweighted does not matter in cycle detection so you should be familiar with it and then you should study topological sort again these are used in multiple applications so if you uh, know how to implement topological sort and how topological sort works you can use this in many of other derivative problems which can be solved using this topological ordering then you should be uh, knowing how to find the connected components in a graph in undirected graph and in directed graph how to find strongly connected components so these are some of the main areas and then uh, shortest path algorithm you should also be familiar with mainly dijkstra and bellman ford what are the time complexities of these and why do we need bellman if its time complexity is more so it's used when we have negative edges otherwise you should go for dijkstra so if it's given that you have only positive distances or you are given that uh, you are modeling some uh, application where these are distances which can never become negative then you should use dijkstra or some variant of it instead of bellman ford so these are some of the graph topics and you should first master these before going into complex algorithms of graph now let's look at other things 
which are trees and suffix trees and pattern matching so uh, again the first and foremost thing is that you should not spend too much time trying to implement try only where your problem is that you would use try to solve your algorithm but you spend a bunch of time just implementing the try data structure so again you should practice implementing this and uh, you should practice in fact uh, array implementation where you take 26 children depending on if your nodes string is from a to z small letters or capital letters then 52 so at this is not space efficient but you should at least be familiar with this so that you quickly implement it and get running and you your main focus remains on the main problem and similarly you should practice some pattern matching algorithms like uh, kmp algorithm raven carp or some other algorithms then uh, these b trees uh, these are not critical but uh, it's good if you know b trees and b plus trees so these i would mark as optional for now then uh, you should be uh, very good in analyzing your algorithm what is the time complexity what is the space complexity you should not make mistake in these since you have written the code you should know what time and space it should take and then uh, you should spend a good amount of time on learning the different sorting and searching algorithms and binary search is a must again uh, you should be able to write a binary search simple binary search even if you are half asleep and uh, many problems you cannot even imagine how many problems can be uh, directly or uh, indirectly done using binary search and then you should look at the different sorting algorithms like merge sort quick sort and heap sort then uh, you should solve some sophisticated problems related to recursion many of them in fact they will automatically come uh, when you are solving some of the tree problems some of the graph problems you will need to re use recursion a lot so you should be practiced in this recursion and then dynamic programming it may look daunting to some of you in the beginning but after you solve a few problems you will notice that these are nothing but just problems which can be solved recursively only thing is that here recursion will break it into smaller sub problems and uh, this will further break into smaller sub problems and you will find that there are too many overlapping problems so instead of solving them again and again you can uh, use dp there either bottom up or top down i personally prefer the bottom up approach and i tabulate Uh, the values starting from base case and going towards the final solution you may uh, like to use memoization but uh, that's a matter of preference and i don't think interviewer would insist you in using one or other but i personally feel bottom up to be my favorite and it naturally comes to me also i try to break the problem into two into two or more parts and then i think of what it depends on and what can be the base case and then i start solving from base and finally i reach towards the bigger or final solution then uh, you should uh, learn about some of the famous divide and conquer algorithms for example merge sort we break the problem into two halves we sort them individually and finally merge them and these these are used in many many applic problems and applications so you should be familiar with these then backtracking and greedy algorithm so these are some of the programming paradigms and in the earlier part these are mainly data structures but you should know the underlying algorithm that is what are heaps why uh, why are heaps so useful that trees cannot do and so on next so we have covered a big part of our preparation this forms the backbone and it's uh, essential to plan well it's not that you are always practicing dynamic programming and you are not looking at other sections you should prioritize other sections as well all of them are important now let's uh, look at uh, other topic that is cs fundamentals and for freshers especially the most important would be operating systems and uh, it's very important even for professionals everybody if you want to become a good programmer you should have a 
good understanding of operating system you should have a good understanding of databases you should have a good understanding of computer networks and uh, if you are running out of time you can focus on some major areas in operating systems like what are processes and threads what is multi processing multi threading synchronization between different threads deadlocks mutexes semaphores and different scheduling algorithms that is used by operating systems so you can focus on some of these major topics and this these should be good enough then you should be familiar with uh, it's good to have it may not be directly asked to you if you have listed some of the projects in your resume where you have used uh, databases then you should know about databases otherwise it, these are good to have things and then uh, you should again uh, depending on the company most of the time these are not asked in interviews but uh, that may be asked if you are interviewing for a company which works in computer networks domain uh, for example if you are interviewing for cisco or juniper it's very likely that you may get one or two fundamental questions in computer networks so depending on that you can uh, brush up your fundamentals of networks now next look at design round so these vary depending on freshers and experience so this is this is one of the main differentiators for freshers you would mostly be facing low level design questions where you are asked to design class diagrams for example you are asked to design a parking lot so what are the different classes that you will design what will be the main logic that you will implement how different classes will implement so you need to come up with class diagrams similarly uh, design elevators and for experienced professional for 3 plus year or 4 plus years these high level designs would be there in the interviews these are system designs where you need to come up with different components how they interact with each other uh, what are clients when should you use load balancer when should you use caching Uh, where should you place your cache? Uh, what's the core logic? What are the APIs you will design? What is the estimation? How you will scale your systems? So these all are asked uh, for mainly for three plus years of experienced professionals. But if you are as a fresher, you have some knowledge of these, then it's a good point. And if you can demonstrate some of the abilities in through a good project in your resume, then it would be a plus point for you now uh, apart from that you should also look at some of the previous year questions of the company you are interviewing for and try to understand uh, what areas they focus more and uh, now it's time to give you a bonus tip that is don't be afraid you will make mistakes don't be afraid to make mistakes learn from them it's not that you have five interviews so you will blindly give five of them and you will think that i will get lucky at one time one out of five time and i will crack this interview take the interviews uh, review your failures where you did well where you did bad so that you can improve on, on that and never repeat your mistakes you will repeat your mistakes as well but try to make as less mistakes same mistakes as possible so those were some of the tips and guidelines hope that helps you all the best for your interviews